Welcome back. In this how-to episode, I'll teach you how to add a touch screen to your 3D printer for use with OctoPrint. A touch screen will allow you to manage your prints without needing to open up your computer or phone. And as a bonus, this project will also make OctoPrint responsive or mobile friendly, making things even easier to do from your phone. Now you can use this guide to add a touch screen to any OctoPrint compatible 3D printer. As an example, I'll be adding one to my Creality Ender 3. In the video description, you'll find a link to the full text and photo based version of this guide, as well as links to all the tools and materials that you'll need. Now, before you get started, you'll have to choose your touch screen. Any touch screen that'll work with the Raspberry Pi will work with OctoPrint, but some are easier to work with than others. I recommend choosing a small screen that connects directly to your Raspberry Pi's GPIO header. You don't need a large screen since the OctoPrint plugin we'll be using is designed for very small screens. I use this 3.5 inch screen from Adafruit. Uh, if you prefer a larger screen, the official Raspberry Pi 7 inch screen will work great too. Some larger displays require a separate HDMI and USB connection, which can make configuration setup more difficult, so I recommend one that connects directly to the Raspberry Pi. Now, the touchscreen I used costs $45 on Amazon. This is slightly more than some other similar screens, but the benefit is the quality and ease of use that Adafruit is known for. You can also find cheaper generic 3.5 inch touchscreens in the $30 range on Amazon, but configuring the screen may be more difficult, and many require the use of a stylus. Now that you have your screen, you'll need to print a case for your touchscreen. In general, there are a few different types of 3D printable touchscreen housings. Now the exact housing you choose will depend on the size of your screen, the screen manufacturer, your printer, and how you want to attach it to your printer. So you can search Thingiverse for touchscreen models to find one that fits your needs. For my Ender 3, I'm using an excellent model made by designer Tronic. It mounts directly to the printer itself and also houses the Raspberry Pi. Now, I'll link to that model in the video description. Now, if you're using the same display that I am and you just want a freestanding mount that sits on your desk, I recommend checking out this great design by the Ruiz Brothers from Adafruit. And they're the official Adafruit 3D print crew who, coincidentally, I went to high school with. Now, if you haven't already, you're going to need to install OctoPrint. Uh, most people watching this video have probably done that already, but if you haven't, I have a great video and guide on that. Okay, now we're going to connect the touchscreen to the Raspberry Pi. If your touchscreen mounts directly to the GPIO header, as mine does, then we'll need to connect and configure it. If your OctoPrint setup uses a camera, now's a good time to attach the camera's ribbon cable to the Pi before connecting it to the screen. Then, carefully push the screen onto the Raspberry Pi's GPIO header. For the Ender 3, the support model you printed is used in place of standoffs. Now these standoffs help to hold the screen securely to the Pi, but if your screen itself came with some standoffs, then I would go ahead and use those instead. Some screens don't take up the entire Raspberry Pi header. That's okay, that just means they're compatible with older Raspberry Pi models too. Now I recommend before proceeding that you back up your Raspberry Pi's SD card. That way if anything goes wrong, it's easy to revert it without needing to reconfigure everything. You can use our Windows or Mac guide for backing up your SD card from the video description. We're going to use a plugin called Touch UI to make OctoPrint mobile friendly and responsive so it displays well on our small screen. So go ahead and put your SD card back into your Raspberry Pi and boot it up, and then visit OctoPrint in your browser by going to http octopi.local. If an update message appears, go ahead and update OctoPrint. Now all these steps may take some time depending on your network speed, so I'm going to go ahead and speed the video up here so you don't have to wait. Okay, now we're going to install the Touch UI plugin. So go to uh, Settings, which is the uh, little wrench icon and then select Plugin Manager. And then you're gonna to wanna to click Get More and then search for Touch UI and then install it. And restart when you're prompted. Okay, next I recommend updating your Raspberry Pi. That way when we go to install our screen, everything will go off without a hitch. So open up Terminal on Mac or Command Prompt on Windows and connect to your Raspberry Pi using the following command. SSH Pi at OctoPi. Enter the default Raspberry Pi password if you haven't changed it, which is Raspberry, all lowercase. Okay, use this command to update everything. sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade yes. And then enter your password. Okay, this will take some time to run depending on how fast your internet connection that your Pi has is. Okay, once that's done, go ahead and reboot your Pi with sudo reboot. Okay, so after it reboots, go ahead and reconnect.
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and configure the touch screen. So if your touch screen connects via GPIO, like mine does, then we're gonna need to tell it to output video to the touch screen instead of to the HDMI port. We also need to tell it to use the touch screen input as a mouse. So if your touch screen came with configuration instructions, use those to get things working. If you're using the same touch screen as me or a similar one, then you could use Adafruit's touch screen configuration script by following these steps. We're gonna to wanna to run CD, user directory, and then we're gonna run this wget command. And this will actually go ahead and retrieve the shell script that's gonna uh, run the uh, setup for us. Now again, in the video description, you'll find a link to the full guide that has all these commands in it so you don't actually have to type them out of this video. Next, we're gonna go ahead and make that script executable. And then we're gonna run it. Okay, so this will bring up the uh, installer and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and select whichever one you're using. So we're gonna select option four because we have the three and a half inch screen. Now for rotation, um, for this screen that I'm using, you actually have to rotate it 270 degrees so the screen isn't upside down, but that might vary based on the screen you're using and how your, um, how your, your housing itself is oriented. But uh, it's easy to change the rotation later on. There's a link in the full guide if, if your screen's upside down at the end. So go ahead and select option three for 270 degrees. Okay, and this will take a few minutes to run. Okay, so when you're asked if you'd like the console to appear on the, on the display, uh, enter N for no. And then when you're asked if you'd like the HDMI display to mirror the Pi TFT display, enter yes. Okay, so go ahead and reboot when it's done. So go ahead and reconnect to your Pi once more. Now what we need to do is we need to configure the Raspberry Pi to boot to a browser automatically. So what Octopi actually is, is, is a website that's running on the Raspberry Pi, and when you connect to it from your computer, you're basically just connecting to that website directly from your computer. So what we want is when the Raspberry Pi boots, it'll automatically open up a web browser and it'll go to octopi.local, just like you would from your computer. And since the output's being mirrored to the display now, we'll be able to see the Octopi dashboard on our Raspberry Pi screen, and then of course, we'll still be able to access it from our computer. So in order to do this, we're gonna use this touch UI boot to browser script. So enter this, uh, the following command, and this will actually clone the touch UI uh, auto start script repo. And then after that's done, we're gonna run the install script inside of there. Okay, this will take a few minutes. Okay, after that finishes running, go ahead and enter your Octoprint username, not your Raspberry Pi one. And then go ahead and restart Octoprint. Okay, so that should be it. So after uh, Octoprint reloads, you should be able to see Octoprint on your touch screen. Okay, I did run into one small issue. When I went and tried to use the touch screen, I noticed that it was rotated. So it seems that for some reason, the Adafruit script that rotated the screen, even though that worked, when you would tap the screen, like in the bottom right corner, it would actually make the tap appear in the, uh, the top right corner. So like the screen was rotated 90 degrees or something. So I have a fix for this in the full guide. I'm gonna run through it very quickly here, but it seems like a lot of commands that I'm gonna do quickly. So just use the full guide if you have that issue. Okay, first you're going to install X input. All right, I already have it installed. Now you're gonna use this command to find your device name. And this is the name we're looking for. So it's the uh, virtual core pointer, which is like a mouse. And then you have a uh, slave pointer. So if you're using the same Adafruit touchscreen as me, just go ahead and use this one. So once you have that, you know, save this output somewhere like a screenshot. Then we need to create a touch UI calibration script. So to do that, we're gonna run this command. This is the command I used up there. So in that full guide, I have these listed out, but you're basically gonna wanna add one of these three lines. And what this does is it has your device name here. So replace that if it's different. And then these are the rotation coordinates. Again, just use the full guide. In my case, I'm gonna wanna use this first line. So I'll just remove these other ones. Okay, and then save. 
and now reboot. So once more, use the full guide. These are listed step by step. If you try to use this video to like type these commands, you know, that'll be craziness. So I don't recommend that. So after the Raspberry Pi reboots, everything should actually work perfectly. Um, and then we're just gonna do one last step, which is calibrating the touch screen, which is kind of a fun one. Okay, so after reconnecting to your Pi, um, run this command, and this will put it into calibration mode. And then on the screen itself, five crosshairs will appear, and just tap each one uh, as carefully as you can using some kind of plastic tool, not a metal one, so like a stylus or, I don't know, like a plastic pen or something. And then when you're done, it'll automatically return to the, um, the main screen. And then you're done with the software bit. So now I'll show you how to assemble the touchscreen housing. Now again, I'm using the Ender 3, and if you're not, I still recommend watching this since most housings have a similar set of instructions, and you'll see some important notes while assembling here. Now go ahead and insert the case into the main holder. The holder is what will mount to the printer itself. And to do this, just slide it directly into the holder and orient it so that the thicker part of the frame is to the left. Just be careful because the case is very thin and easy to break. But once it's assembled, it's quite sturdy. Next, slide the Raspberry Pi into the case, making sure that there is a snug fit. Now, if your touchscreen came with four little perforated tabs on the corner, you're gonna need to snap those off with a pair of pliers to make sure that the screen will fit in the case. Now, using this 40 millimeter USB fan is optional, but recommended. It's only $10, so I decided to do it just to ensure I always get the highest quality prints possible. Now, connect the fan using the included screws and cover the Pi side of the screws with Kapton tape to prevent shorts. Now I ended up shortening the USB cable for my fan to keep my setup as clean as possible. I don't like having a bunch of cables all zip tied everywhere. Um, I did this by prying open the speed control switch and then desoldering, cutting, and resoldering the cable back in place. The whole thing only took a few minutes. Now normally a lot of fans connect directly to the GPIO header and they're powered from the Pi, but obviously you can't do that since the screen is there. Um, so you can go ahead and just solder it directly to a USB cable and then plug it in, or you can buy one that already has a USB cable attached. Next, we're gonna secure the back plate using the two clamps that we printed. If we're not using a fan, then we can use a blank back plate instead. Okay, now we're ready to mount the assembly. So remove the two screws from the lower left part of your printer, I think it uses an M3 hex key, and then use them to secure the new touchscreen housing. Okay, so I ran into a small problem. The fan that I used is 20 millimeters thick, and when you go to mount it, it actually hits right here. So you can't mount it all the way. So uh, this is actually two days later, I ordered a different fan that's only 10 millimeters thick. All right, this is the replacement fan I got. It was about the same price. This one's only 10 millimeters thick, so this will work. It's made by Noctua. They're actually a really great company that make these brown fans. And this is another super quiet fan. So you wanna make sure you choose one that is quiet so you don't have to hear it and make your printer generate even more noise than it already does. So obviously the video description links to this one, not the one that's too big. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swap it out with the back. Now make sure that when you put the fan in, that it's blowing up. So it's sucking air out of the pie instead of blowing into the pie. We're good to go. Now the old camera mount that a lot of Ender 3 owners use will block the touch screen. So Tronic was also awesome enough to remix the original camera mount into one that won't block the screen. So go ahead and just swap out the old one for the new one. Now you need to reconnect your power and data cables to the pie. If you're powering the Pi from your 3D printer, then you'll probably need to solder a longer micro USB cable to your buck or step down converter or run a micro USB extension cable such as this one. I have a full guide on powering your Raspberry Pi from your 3D printer in case you're interested. Okay, now for the finishing touch. If you printed the screen surround that goes around the original screen, now would be a good time to adhere it using like a little bit of glue or foam tape or something. Here's the screen in action. So you can use a lot of the same features as you could on the computer, like pausing and starting prints, controlling your extruder. You can see at the top here, they're the same tabs that you'd normally find in OctoPrint. And if for some crazy reason you wanna view the screen right here, you can. Well, that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe so you don't miss out on future projects. And as always, thank you very much for watching.